Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us at IU Cinema's Creative Collaborations Virtual Information Session. My name is Dr. Alicia Cosma. I'm the director of IU Cinema. A couple notes on how this session is going to run. Um, we will present some information about the program, its eligibility and components. We'll have ample time for questions um, within the hour we've allotted for today's program. But I do want to point out that you may use the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen to enter a question at any time during the presentation, and we will be sure to answer it before we close today. Live um, captioning is also enabled for this program should you need that extra additional kind of um, visual component to the audible information that we're presenting. So as I said, uh, I am Dr. Cosma. I'd like to take a minute to introduce my co-presenter this afternoon. This is Brittany Friesner. She is the Managing Director of IU Cinema. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here today. Uh, as Dr. Cosma said, uh, I'm the Managing Director of IU Cinema, and part of that is working as the primary administrator of our Creative Collaborations Program, as well as our Program Advisory Board, which is the group along with IU Cinema leadership, myself and Dr. Cosma, who reviews and approves all proposals. I'm looking forward to telling you more about both of those today. Alicia? Thank you, Brittany. So just to start us off, I'll give everyone a little overview about IU Cinema, should you be unfamiliar with us, and then a very top level overview of what Creative Collaborations is. And then I will leave all the, the nitty gritty to Brittany, because as she said, she really is the point person and the driver behind this program. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, what exactly is IU Cinema? We are an academic support unit. We are also an industry leader in theatrical exhibition and program curation. As such, IU Cinema is dedicated to producing unique artistic, educational, and intellectually enriching programs. We're committed to using film and film culture to increase cultural competencies and intellectual emancipation across the IU and Bloomington communities. This manifests itself in myriad of forms, including but not limited to film series, visiting scholars, and filmmakers, as well as other various film industry professionals, opportunities for students to have unparalleled access to one of the, some of the most influential global experts and artists working in film. In addition to this, we also sponsor and help run conferences and symposia, student film showcases, internships, and practical industry experience opportunities for students on campus. And last but never least is community engagement. Since our first public screening in January of 2011, the cinema has supported our mission of Film for All by serving over 310,000 people, programming films from more than half of the 195 United Nations recognized countries and offering more than half of our programming completely free of charge. Creative collaborations is a key component of the cultural and intellectual work that we do at the cinema. So creative collaborations is our primary method for partnering with IU centers, student groups, academic units, as well as greater Bloomington nonprofits, um, community groups, and other entities. In this partnership, we strive to do three primary things. The first is really to foster diverse programming that helps to engage campus and community and bridge those two constituencies together. The second is to highlight critical issues and themes through film-related programming that we curate in collaboration with our partners and in collaboration with subject matter experts. And the last is really to engage new and returning audiences in the cultural and intellectual work that we do at the cinema. In this, we have a small team that is dedicated to running this program and making sure that our partners and the cinema and our constituencies get as much out of it as we possibly can. So that would include myself as well as Brittany, who is the driver and manager of the program. 
and our two outreach staff members, Asia Essex, who is our outreach and engagement coordinator, and Max Moore, who is our outreach and engagement assistant. Chances are you have heard from either Brittany or Asia or Max or have interacted with them or potentially met with them in an outreach event, and that has helped to bring you here with us today. So I will now turn it over to Brittany and she will get into all the logistics and the good stuff that make up our creative collaborations program. Thank you, Alicia. All right, let's start with the basics. Who can apply for creative collaborations? The program is open to both campus and community groups, as was mentioned, and more specifically in those groups, um, we're focusing on IU student groups, IU units, Greater Bloomington Area Community Groups and Greater Bloomington Area Nonprofits. The program will be open to these groups each fiscal year, and our fiscal year runs July 1st to June 30th. And most programs, uh, most approved programs, will be scheduled to take place in September through May, so generally either fall or spring semester. Currently, proposals are being accepted for fiscal year 2024 applications for programs that will take place in fall 2023 or spring 2024. And to ensure we're offering the most opportunities to the broadest spectrum of organizations, any organization who has been accepted to the program must wait two application cycles before applying again. So what that means for the current cycle is to be eligible, in addition to being one of those types of organizations, your organization cannot have been approved for a creative collaboration program from fall 2021 through this spring 2023. If you are eligible for the program, there are three main requirements that we want to see from all proposals. And I'll go into a little bit more detail on each after a quick overview. We require a lead sponsoring organization and at least one additional supporting organization, at least two and no more than three film events proposed to take place in IU Cinema, and finally, at least one off-campus community event component. Okay, let's dig deeper into each of these. So what we mean by at least one sponsoring unit means there needs to be one entity that will take full responsibility and work with us to confirm all program details. In addition to this, uh, excuse me, this should be the organization that uh, submits the application. So you'll be who we work with. In addition to this, each proposal must have a minimum of one additional supporting organization. Oh, Alicia, can you advance the slides? And then when we're, on, yeah, we're on this one now. Yeah, okay, great. Um, supporting organizations can be groups you work with with any number of ways, and that's listed here. So they can be fiscal partners, they can be marketing partners. There are lots of ways that your sponsoring organization can help you as the lead organization, and you define that, not us. Um, most important here is that we will only consider multidisciplinary collaborative proposals, though. And especially for IU units, um, this is important. If you are um, looking for an additional sponsoring unit, they need to be a unit outside of your current home unit and your overarching school. So what I mean, what we mean by that is, say you're support, uh, submitting a proposal on behalf of the College of Arts and Sciences, you can have additional supporting organizations, any number that you would like within the college, but at least one of them needs to be outside the college. Again, this gets back at really wanting to see multidisciplinary collaborative proposals that are bridging campus and community. Next is how many programs you propose. Proposals should include, again, a minimum of two events in IU Cinema and no more than three. And the reason there's a minimum of two events is that we feel strongly that to effectively explore a specific theme or topic, a minimum of two film screening events at IU Cinema should be included. And you don't need to be film experts because that's what we're here for. Uh, we want you to be the subject matter experts. So if you have a theme, but you only maybe have one film idea, please still submit your proposal. We're looking to approve subject matter expertise, not the films you're proposing. Um, this is probably the biggest shift in the way creative collaborations used to be if you participated previously. Um, but again, we're focused uh, more on the expertise of our potential collaborators, and then we'll work with you to determine what films best illustrate your theme or topic. That said, please do feel free to include any film ideas you might have in your proposal, um, but it will be a collaborative process before we settle on the final films, because some of that could also depend on whether films are even available. 
Um, and the final requirement is to include at least one community event component. This should be an event that's in addition to the two or three events that you're proposing take place at IU Cinema. And this event ideally will take place off campus and be specifically focused on serving a community audience, but not exclusive to a community audience. There is no limit to how many community events you propose, but at least one should be included in your proposal. All right, so you've got all those items in order and you're ready to apply. As previously mentioned, proposals are accepted once per fiscal year and applications will be open, the application will be open from August through December each year. The application is an online form and it will save your work as you advance through it so you can revisit before your final submission. The application takes approximately 30 minutes to complete and you can find a PDF version on our website so you know what kind of questions to prepare for. This year's application closes at noon on December 1st and no late applications can be accepted. So please plan ahead. And having been to this rodeo many, many, many times, uh, for my sanity and yours, I strongly encourage you to not wait till the absolute last minute. I've had folks emailing me at 10 minutes till noon in years past, um, having internet go out um, or not having everything prepared because they didn't realize this one question needed a certain level of detail. So please, please, please prepare in advance. Once all applications are received, they will be downloaded and reviewed in a three-stage process. Review will take place from December through February by IU Cinema Leadership, again, that will be myself and Dr. Cosma, and our Program Advisory Board, which is a group of 18 members across campus and community, which includes representatives from film-related campus entities, as well as 10 at-large members from across campus and community. You can find a listing of our current board members on our website. Uh, the criteria that our board and, and Alicia and myself will use to evaluate proposals are all weighted equally. And here are the seven factors on which each proposal will be reviewed. It's important to note that proposals that make it through the first and second stage of review, representatives from those proposals will be invited to attend a Q&A with the full board before final approvals will be made. And if your proposal is approved, our partnership will then be governed by a memorandum of understanding, which will outline all of our commitments to you, our partner, as well as commitments each partner agrees to. And of course, what films will be a part of your program, when they will screen, if you'll have guests, um, all those kinds of details will work out in advance. For every approved proposal, IU Cinema provides approximately $1,000 of in-kind services per program instance which includes the following fees and services noted here. This means for each program in your proposal, IU Cinema will cover these costs. And we know that funding can be a barrier to some folks, and we never want it to be the sole reason someone does not apply. So there is the possibility for funding assistance for qualifying groups. If you have an operating budget of $499,000 or less, additional funding may be a possibility. We ask that you please include in your proposal how much additional funding you think you might need. And then we'll determine based on our budget, your budget, your proposal, um, what might be possible. In turn, for providing all of this, we ask our partners to commit to a few critical items, including signing the MOU, but more specifically, and the additional commitments, uh, I'll give you a couple of detail on two of them, um, but they're, they're hopefully mo mostly self-explanatory. Um, but we ask that all creative collaborations programs are free, but ticketed. Um, free is so they are accessible to all. Ticketed is so we can all be mindful of capacity. Um, and if something's selling super well, and we need to be mindful of a sellout, or it's not selling super well, and we need to get more promotions out there. Um, and it's important to note with this, um, that no funding, you shouldn't rely on any funding being generated either for us or for you um, through ticket sales, because there will be no ticket sales. <laughs> <laughs> um, partners will co cover select fees that are incurred for the films you choose. And this specifically and most importantly includes licensing rights for each film and then partial fees related to ticketing and screening materials. IU Cinema is committed to paying licensing fees on copyrighted works and will work with our film distributor contacts to book your films and then you'll reimburse us for those um, actual costs. As to ticketing fees, it's important to note that even for free events, 
IU Cinema's ticketing is um, charged a fee per ticket issued. And this is all operated and managed by the IU Auditorium through their ticket master contract. We also will cover um, the bulk of ticketing staff and account management fees. So we ask partners to only cover partial of these fees. Finally, it's important to note that if you plan to invite and host any guest as part of your program, you will be responsible for all guest arrangements, including invitations, hosting, and covering all associated costs for travel and accommodations, and if there are any honorariums required. Finally, the program planning timeline. Much of this has already been covered, but we wanted to be sure to illustrate that this is a year long process that we will be working together on to bring your programs to life. Okay, <laughs> I know that was an incredible amount of information and I'm hopeful that you all are gonna overwhelm us with questions in a short bit. Um, but I wanna first encourage everyone before we get to questions to visit and bookmark our Creative Collaborations website, which has full program guidelines a PDF copy of the application, as I mentioned, and also an application checklist. So we wanted to provide as much as we can to help everyone through this process. Also, we'll, we are recording this webinar and we'll post it to our IU Cinema YouTube channel for you to visit or reshare with others who couldn't be here today. You can ask us questions anytime today. We have a lot of time left for questions uh, or in the future through the IU collab at indiana.edu email address listed here. But again, Hopefully we'll get a lot of your questions answered today. Uh, a reminder that to ask a question, you'll want to use the Q&A box, which is at the bottom of your Zoom screen. I know Max and Asia from our outreach team are in the virtual audience out there and they have some questions prepared to get us started. So Max, Asia, whenever you're ready, let's throw some questions out there. Okay, so just to be clear, what hard materials is IU Cinema providing for this and what are we expected to provide? Alicia, I don't know if you wanna go back to those slides or just have me mention it. These are our IU Cinema commitments to you. So to, to reiterate, um, ticketing services and um, ticket distribution with, with partial fees covered by you. We will take on procuring your film rights and the materials. And what we mean by materials, um, this is you know explaining how, how we do what we do behind the scenes. Sometimes films might be available in 35 millimeter, they might be digitized, or they might not be available at all. Um, and that's when we might run into issues of coming back to you about alternate titles and things like that. But occasionally, Films are only available as HD files, and our technical team will actually take on converting it into a digital form that can then be screened by our projection equipment. So that's what, that's what we mean by materials. Um, also, we'll be covering all funding for the venue usage and staffing. So staffing for coordinating your events with you, marketing your events, um, and anything else that needs to happen behind the scenes um, to make your partnership come to life. Um, and I'll add one note, Brittany, on the marketing materials that we provide for all of our partners. Yes, please. So for any of our creative collaborations partners, we market the um, events exactly the same way that we market the events for IU Cinema. So that means that we will create a poster in various sizes, ones that can be put up physically, ones that can be distributed digitally. It is added into the regular promotion rotation of our website of our weekly now showing newsletter, as well as into all of our social media channels. And between our digital promotion, we reach an audience of about 14,000 individuals. So we handle creating all the social collateral, all the design and promotional materials that we will share with your team. And we also ask that you do promotion through your networks as well. We have a pretty significant audience that sees our materials but your audience will always be a little bit different than ours. And so we wanna make sure that this program reaches um, as many people as possible. Uh, so we will handle creating all of those materials for you and sharing them with you. And also um, if you need to, we can also suggest some uh, additional um, marketing opportunities that you may be interested in participating in, in addition to what the cinema will all already provide for you. And it's important to note that you, this doesn't mean you are not able to provide your own or create your own materials. 
but we do ask that if you do, that you credit us in those materials and we'll provide logos and we'll also ask you for your logos um, to put on your uh, materials that we create. Um, then, I'm oh, sorry, uh, I think also then what partners are expected to provide. Can you go back to that slide? Oh, sure. Please. Uh, so here are the partner commitments once again. Um, as I mentioned, all programs will need to be free. Um, you will need to cover the exact costs for screening fees. The reason there's a range here is some films are older and they might not cost as much. We also have found at times we'll reach out to someone and maybe the distribution or licensing rights still lie with the filmmaker and they won't charge us anything. So that's why there's such a big range here. We don't anticipate any film costing more than $500, but if it does, we will negotiate that price down as best we can. And if we cannot, we will, if it's, if any film comes back and is more than $500, we'll come back to you and say, okay, do you think you can um, cover this additional funding or do you want us to find another film um, that might work? Then again, in related to marketing, um, we, although we'll create all the materials, you need to tell us what your series description is, what your subject matter expertise is, and describe the films and why they are the best suited to um, address your theme. So that's what we mean by program information for marketing materials, as well as your logos um, and any of your collaborators and sponsor list. Um, also ask for credit on any materials that you create yourself or on any promotions that you push out there. Um, and credit, of course, to the Creative Collaborations Program as well. And then we do ask partners, even though we do have a big audience, we have a big audience of people who know film. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily have a big audience of people who know you and your themes and topics and expertise. So we do ask partners to work to bring an audience of at least 50 people. So that's why it's really important that in addition to the marketing and promotions we're doing that you are also getting into your constituency that might not have any idea IU Cinema even exists. And then finally, we do ask that partners are responsible for providing an introduction in the IU Cinema before each film screening. And if, they, if you do have any guests, of course, hosting and covering all those expenses, but also if any guests are coming and doing the Q&A, that you're identifying and providing the moderator for that conversation afterwards and all the panel participants. All right, hopefully that's um, enough detail, which thank you for that question, Asia, because we got to go into a little more detail on a few of those points. All right, Madeline asks, could you please review the criteria for evaluating proposals? Alicia, I don't know if you want to step through these in, in any more detail or. Madeline, sure, I mean, first and foremost, questions? we want to make sure that the what you are proposing um, really situates you and your organization and your group as the subject matter experts. <clears throat> Excuse me. As Brittany said, um, we can work with you on the films and we are absolutely happy to find the best films that illustrate your expertise, but the expertise is coming from your group and the ability for your group and your group's expertise to highlight the critical theme or issue or advocacy point that you're really looking to a foreground within the creative collaborations um, process is, is really um, kind of the core of what we look at when we're looking at proposals. That being said, we want to make sure that um, what is being presented kind of jives with our with our programming uh, vision and our mission, which again is um, cultural, the increased cultural competencies and um, intellectual intellectual emancipation through film and film culture. So super broad, <laughs> super big, super broad, and we do that purposefully because we know what we know, but we also know what we don't. And we, we know that other people are experts in things that we are not. And we are really interested in highlighting that expertise and bringing it to the table. We also wanna make sure that this is something that fills a community need. And community here is, um, is, is understood really broadly and really deeply. Um, I'll give you an example of something that might <clears throat> not necessarily fill a community need is for example, might be a student film festival. There are 
a wide variety of student film festivals that happen off campus, that happen on campus. Um, so many that um, adding an additional one may not actually be the best use of your expertise in time and our expertise in time. So if there is something specific that you're trying to get to um, within in the I, with the framework of a student film festival, for example, um, we can work with you to draw it out and see what it might look like in some type of different programmatic configuration. But what we want is for this program to be additive to the cultural and intellectual programming that happens in Bloomington as a whole, not to duplicate what's already happening in Bloomington as a whole. So that is also a critical component. Again, this highlighting of your expertise um, and really critically how collaborative your, your program is. This is creative collaborations, not just because we're working with the sponsoring organization, but because we want a number of organizations to be working together. Um, which is why there is the required component of you having another a partner that you are at least one partner that you are bringing into this. We firmly believe that ideas and conversations and learning and intellectual curiosity and advocacy germinate the best in collaborative environments. And so having a um, a strong focus on collaboration in a way that doesn't just check off a box, but actually, again, is additive to the program that you're suggesting. Again, super key. We want to know that you know who this program is for. That's what we mean by defined audience. And we want to know that you are interested in actually engaging those audiences by coming with a, a, an outreach plan for yourself, right? Um, we will work with you on that outreach plan. We will augment that outreach plan with our own efforts to build and curate an audience for this. But we want to know that you are not just interested in building a program, having it exist, and maybe people show up, maybe they don't. Um, we are really focused on our ability to work together to be able to build audiences, to engage with the quite frankly phenomenal work that our creative collaborations partners has, have brought to us in the past and we know will continue to bring to us in the future. And then, of course, um, we need, uh, as a required component, that there is a community focus on this. So IU Cinema is got an IU in front of it. We understand that we are an institutional entity, but we are really focused and really committed to working not just with our campus community, but with the broader community as well. And we do understand that that um, oftentimes means that <clears throat> the best way to reach those community audiences is not to ask them to come to campus, is for us to bring the IU cinema experience or for us to bring our expertise in combination with a, a partner into the community, just to lower a little bit the, um, the kind of barrier that can be getting to campus or participating in an event on campus, particularly in a campus space where maybe some um, constituencies or audiences have never been before. And so bringing the uh, IU Cinema experience into the community with this, um, the inclusion of a community focused event, again, super important. And I will just um, reemphasize what Brittany said earlier is that all of these are weighted equally. So these really are the fully success, like the full components of a successful program. We do not consider one of these to be more important than the other. When um, the uh, IU Cinema leadership, as well as our program advisory board, when we sit down and review these proposals, we look at them through the lens of these individual um, evaluative criteria. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alicia. And I'm going to answer one question by illuminating the last point on here. <clears throat> so someone asked, is there any wiggle room for programming more than three events? Yes, but only three of them will take place in IU Cinema if you're approved. So this goes back to the inclusion of at least one community focused event. You can have as many community focused events mentioned in your proposal and, and plans to, to produce them and present them as you'd like. And it's very important that we note it says events, not screening. So these events could be anything, any scope of imagination that you can think of that are focused on engaging a community audience. Of course, for us, a film screening seems the most obvious. So it's just maybe you're doing a five film series and three of those screenings happen at the cinema and two happen in the community. But this is really open to your interpretation 
of what you think would be the best way to engage a community audience with your expertise. So it could be a masterclass, it could be a street fair, um, it could be a story hour at the Monroe County Library. You know, we're really open to what this community focused event looks like. It's not limited to a screening, nor is there a limit to how many you put on. It is worth noting though, that I use cinemas primary funding in terms of venue use and staffing is for events that take place in IU Cinema. So that's something to keep in mind, either um, looking at venues or maybe including partners in your proposal that are willing to give their space. And that's part of how they partner with you is their in-kind services for these other events. We're also happy to work with you if you have questions ahead of the proposal deadline to offer um, ideas and connections in the community for other places that we either often partner with or where folks often go to put on events or film screenings when, when the IU Cinema isn't available. Uh, oh, sorry, did you have more you wanna add? No, I would just say, I'll just take the next question because I'm the, I'm the person. Yeah, I, I was gonna field this one to you anyway. I'm the person that <laughs> says yes or no when it comes to budget. So <laughs> this is a real question <laughs> and it's probably the first question I would ask too. Um, I will tell you that the range of funding is really dependent um, and it is dependent on a couple of variables. How many proposals we receive, how many of those proposals are eligible for additional funding because we do cap it. We want our additional funding to go to the people that need it um, and how much additional funding is requested. In the past, additional funding has ranged anywhere between $400 and $1,000. It depends on need. It depends on how many proposals we get. It depends on the size and scope of the program being offered. I can tell you that it is unlikely that additional funding from IU Cinema will ever cover full costs for your program. Um, but we do make every effort we can because this is something that is at the core of this program. We do not think that not having a gigantic budget should be a barrier for participating in this. Um, we make every effort to provide as much additional funding as we possibly can, given those variables that, that we are playing with. So mm -hmm. it is an, an unsatisfying answer. I understand that because it's not an actual number, um, but it is uh, something that we are really committed to doing equitably. And so what I don't want to do is to give you like a fake number and a fake range and then have a program be bounded by that. Because if we can do more, we will always do as much as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. Alicia, is there an amount or a percentage of costs that you would say each partner should at minimum be expected? Like there's, there's. I know you said that we'll, we'll never be able to fully fund, but is 50%, 25%, you know, because we don't want folks to not apply because they're not sure. Is there is there a range that is maybe a, a bare minimum folks should be thinking about um, who they ask to partner or help fund to support? I would say a bare minimum, just for planning purposes, I would expect that applicant groups can at least cover screening fees for a single film. Okay. So that again, there's, there's quite a range. There can be quite a range. So um, it can be anywhere from $250 to $500. But again, we've had distributors or filmmakers say, you know what, just show it. I'm glad it's out there. Or I'm sorry, that's a brand new film and that's going to be um, $1,200. Mm -hmm. um, so again, that, that that's uh, ranges. Um, but again, you can always reach out to us, if, especially if you have specific films you're interested in. And I'd always be willing to, to reach out to our distributor contacts and ask in advance um, if that is what your submission of a proposal is predicated on. Absolutely. And if you, if this is something that is of um, serious concern that you think could potentially stop you from submitting a proposal, please reach out because we are very, very um, happy to have, you know, pre-application conversations mm -hmm. to let you know, like, yes, theoretically, this could be possible or no, that's kind of beyond what we're able to provide. And that will give you a sense of a better way to shape your proposal. Mm -hmm. In general, when we work with partners through creative collaborations or through anything else, we say usually plan to be able to spend about $600. 
if you think you can per film, per per film. film. Yeah. If you think you can spend $600 per film, then you're good in this instance for additional funding. I would say if you are proposing a two or three film series, be prepared to cover the cost for at least one of them. So that is baseline $600. And, and when we start to talk about single or double or, or three films, um, it's important to know, I don't know if you want to go back to that slide for um, program number of programs. Alicia, I, I do want to just go into this a little more because I, it was on the slide, but I, I didn't really go into detail. Um, single film events are discouraged, but not um possible however uh again we feel fairly strongly that to to explore a theme or topic with any depth we want to see at least two films so it's truly a series of course if you've got the top expert in a film as a guest who's who, excuse me in a topic um who's associated in a film or for, uh, uh is a uh, uh, talking head on the film um, a, a great example from the past would be James Baylog, the photographer um, who was part of the documentary Chasing Ice. Um, if that is a guest you would like to bring in and, and you only want to show that film, it's possible. And we would still encourage you to submit after you reach out to us first before submitting, but it will be rare that single events get approved. And part of, part of that rarity will be whether there's um, what kind of uh, guest is attached or if it's a part of um, a major celebration that's happening elsewhere in the community, and this is one component of a broader celebration. Um, so so wanted to clarify that. Alicia, do you have anything else you wanna mention on single film events? No, I think with single film events, with most of creative collaborations, I think the most important thing to remember is that while the program is a competitive one, while it does have boundaries and certain requirements, um, you may have noticed that we are very flexible to making work what we can make work. And we are very happy to have conversations before applications are submitted to help you pull a idea together or to get a more concrete sense in, a, in, in terms of, I wanna do X, Y, and Z. Is this something that might be possible? We are um, more than happy to have those conversations. So the program has boundaries. It's not a free for all, but we strive to be as flexible as possible because we. this is one of our, I mean, it's a program we hold very close to our hearts. It's a program we love doing because we love partnering with different organizations, but really it is a, um, a great kind of boon to the cinema to be able to work with people who have different audiences, who work in different areas, who have different expertise. Um, and we're being intellectually greedy in wanting to bring that into the cinema and share that with as many people as possible. So we are we are open to be flexible where and when we can be flexible. And, and just to reiterate, and it's part of us doing these information sessions, um, especially um, this fall, there'll be in-person ones again, if you want to come meet us in person, there's one coming up on October 3rd at the Monroe County Public Library. And again, on um, that's a Monday evening. And again, then on Saturday, October 29th at noon at the Cook Center in Maxwell Hall. Um, but we part of the reason that the application period is so long is because we know there are a lot of moving parts here. And you might have a lot of questions that come up once you get into the details, once you start reaching out to partners, or once you start... Um, brainstorming what films you might want to suggest. So know that that is why the application is open so long, because we want to hear from you. We know there will be additional questions. We know there will likely be things you're not sure of. And again, we don't want anyone to not submit simply because there's doubt. Please reach out to us. All right, I'll take this next one. Um, Yes, um, the deadline is December 1st, and when programs will generally happen is September through May. Um, organizations will absolutely have a say when programs can happen. Um, and this, this person specifically asked um, if you wanted to align with something else happening in the broader Bloomington community. This again is where there are boundaries, but we will try to work with folks as, as much as possible. Generally speaking, IU Cinema has certain screening dates and certain screening times throughout all of our programming season. 
And um, we also have a lot of moving parts behind the scenes in terms of graduate student projectionist uh, schedules to work through, our house and events uh, schedule staffing to work through, as well as ticketing clerks who we hire from the IU Auditorium. So there will be some boundaries in terms of what days and dates and screening times we, we have available, but we will absolutely be working with partners collaboratively to determine when their screenings take place. And it's important to note, we've got um, 24 spots set aside for creative collaborations each fiscal year. Um, we will work with partners to figure out whether their events happen in the fall or in the spring, but we will hit a point, I'm sure, at which we need to say, okay, not everybody can happen in the fall or not everybody can happen in the spring. So there might be some give and take there with partners once we have all applications approved for the next fiscal year and figure out what each partner is looking for in terms of timing and scheduling. Now, Alicia, do you want to take this next one? Sure. This next question is, are there any limits on the type of films we select? And I assume the limits refers to uh, the content of the films that are selected. Um, in short, no. <laughs> no, we do not shy away from films that can be challenging or films that can be controversial, but we do require that films that um, may have the uh, content in them that could be offensive or potentially triggering, triggering to any audiences be contextualized by conversation, by which I mean we show films from every period of cinema possible, um, which means we show films from when things like gender and racial and sexual representation was terrible and racist and bad. Um, but those films exist in history. We do not show them and just ask people to walk away. We show them, we contextualize them, and we work through them. We also don't just show them to show them. If there is a compelling reason to show a film that may have controversial or um, offensive or triggering content, we will want to have the conversation as to why. And then we will want to have the conversation as to how are we contextualizing this? Um, how are we putting this into social and cultural and historical context for the audience? And how is this film helping the group achieve the aims of the program in general? Um, it is with those kind of questions foregrounded, it is not often that we have said no to films. Um, we say no to films when those questions cannot be answered. Mm -hmm. And then further, just in terms of um, mechanics, yeah. um, we can't get every film. Um, we, we are magicians. Um, <coughs> however, and we have a lot of distribution contacts over the years and are a member of um, the Feder International Federation of Archives. So we have access to a lot of films other cinemas might not necessarily have access to. But if we cannot find the copyright holder, or if we cannot find suitable screening materials, we'll have to say no to the film. So that's something we hate doing and we will go to as many links as we can to find the rights, including hiring copyright researchers, which we've done in the past. Um, but there, there are times that we have to say no and we don't wanna say no. And it's simply because of the barriers of not being able to find the copyrights holder or finding them, this happened to me recently, and them never responding to any of your emails or phone calls. Um, and we have certainly had times where we've secured rights, but we had to find our own materials and there was there was nothing out there. Um, so there literally wasn't anything to screen. So th those might be the other um, areas in which we have to limit what, what films are shown. Brittany, why don't you take this next one? Okay. Um, what are some examples of community events that people have created? Well, this is a great question, but also a difficult one because this is probably one of the biggest changes to the new creative collaborations program. So this is something that some of our partners over the years have had be part of their creative collaborations proposals um, and eventual approved series that happened, but it wasn't something that was previously required. So what I can offer is that 
one of our creative collaborations um, from the previous structure um, and evaluation and, and requirements that is taking place this fall is the On the Road series with the Writers Guild at Bloomington. They are having two screenings at IU Cinema that both include uh, Q and A's. And then they are also presenting film screenings elsewhere in the community. I know at least one of them is at the IU Library's Moving Image Archive. I believe they might be having a reading group um, outside of that and then having a gathering that follows that. Um, the the um, theme of that series is the 50th anniversary of Jack Kerouac's On the Road um, and the connection to IU through the original scroll being held at the Lilly Library. So that's a great one great example from this fall. I don't know, Misha, if you have others um, recently that you can think of. I mean, that's the one that I come back to. And I think it's a great example of the way that a creative collaborations can bridge the, um, the campus and the community because it does come from a community organization coming from the Writers Guild, but it also incorporates not only campus resources, but there are faculty that bridge um, between working on campus and being part of the Writers Guild. And it really is focused on creating a robust series of events so between uh, the reading group and the screenings, and I believe they're bringing in a guest who's going to uh, do a talk at the library, at the mm -hmm. Monroe County Library. And so it is film based and it is film focused, but it is not film, uh, it is not exclusive to film, mm -hmm. right? And so when we think about the community events, they do not necessarily have to be just showing a movie somewhere else. I think as Brittany mentioned earlier, they can be a wide range of things from master classes to student art projects to a story time to um, open houses at your um, at your groups or at your nonprofits um, to collaborations with other events that are happening um, in the community. Um, really, the kind of the sky is the limit when it comes to community collaborations and we are encouraging of any, any kind of um, iteration, any of what a, a community event looks like, as long it is, as long at, as it will benefit your group, essentially. Um, we are here not just to facilitate partnerships between the um, applicant organizations and the cinema, but we are also interested in helping the partners that we are working with advance their own goals on campus and in the community. So whether that be through an event at the cinema or through the community events that you're curating as part of your proposal, um, the goals of your group are as important in, the, in this program as are the goals of the cinema and the creative collaboration um, program in general. Mm -hmm. Um, I will take uh, this next question, which is not the next question you see, Alicia, but the one after that. Um, what happens if we make a proposal, are accepted, and then need to back out? This happens all the time. Um, I won't say that it happens a lot, um, but usually I'd say one proposal that's accepted every cycle has had to either eliminate uh, a series, uh, excuse me, a screening. Maybe they had planned for three um, but they realized either they didn't have the funding or they didn't have the guests or something happened and they, they could no longer do all three films. We just, we will we'll work with you and adjust the memorandum of understanding to adjust all costs um, and expectations. We will set through the MOU process. Um, as I said, um, all of the details that govern our partnership will be included in that. And we'll negotiate all of that before um, both of our organizations sign it. But part of that does have um, deadlines baked into it. And so there will be temp points, um, checkpoints, excuse me, throughout our partnership that are, okay, we need to have all film rights confirmed and materials confirmed by a certain date. Partners need to have a certain amount of funding raised and transferred to IU Cinema by a certain date. Marketing needs to be created by a certain date. Um, so ideally, haha. -ha, um, if, if something happens and you need to cancel, it will happen within these temp poles. We also know that things happen <laughs> um, and we can plan for it, even if it's gone so far as to be promoted, be on our website, tickets distributed, um, we'll, we'll work through it. You won't be penalized for that. 
Um, and it won't mean that you aren't allowed to um, apply in the next year, because obviously if your program doesn't take place, um, then you shouldn't be beholden to that requirement. Now, if some of the events take place, but only one or two needs to cancel, you would still then be considered a proposal that was accepted in that cycle and would need to wait two application cycles before applying again. Alicia, do you want to take this next one? I've already given a few details, but if you want to give a little bit more. Sure. Um, so no partnered program that this cinema does, whether through creative collaborations or through something else, charges for tickets. We require that they all be free. Um, one, this uh, helps us um, increase the number of free events that we offer to anyone who would like to attend them, which is a critical component of our mission. Um, two, logistically, the cinema is an academic unit. We are not a business unit. So even if you did charge for tickets, we couldn't give you the money for them. Um, so, I mean, we'll take it in our budget, but we don't see it as a required component. Uh, and, um, we would much prefer the screenings to be free so as many people as possible can come to them uh, with no economic barrier to entry. All right, so that is all the questions we have, but we do have about nine more minutes. If anyone, including Max or Asia, if you want to throw a few more questions you had prepared out, um, we have time for one or two more before we close today's session. I'll give it a beat. Oh, here we go. Can we sell merch or swag during our events? Alicia, I don't know if we've discussed this. Um, you can. Yes, it's complicated. <laughs> you can. Um, complicated you... by us for setup, but also complicated by the university for how fiscal transactions can take place on the IU campus. Yes, it is complicated by the university. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> it is that complicated for us to help set up. We are very, we have in the past and still do set up tables for example, selling books or merch. We just had a, a music group that was in this past week that um, had merch for sale. We set it up in our lower lobby. We are happy to do that. It is complicated based on the way the university will allow for the processing of financial transactions. It's not impossible uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and if this is something your group is interested in doing, we could walk through those complications and then you can determine whether or not uh, you want to deal with it. And if you do, we are happy to set it up for you um, and enable you to do that. It's just like an extra step to go through and it, it is at the purview of the um, the partner if they if they want to go through that process of doing it. All right, last question, which is a great one. Um, and also one I don't think we've we've discussed, Alicia. Um, but if we partner with another organization for a film series together, are we both excluded from making separate proposals in the next application cycle since we were both accepted together? I want to say the answer is no, because there is a lead organization that is taking full responsibility. That is the organization that needs to sit out for two more cycles. Alicia, do you have any further um, thoughts or specifics you want to add? No, I think um, I think that's that's absolutely correct. Certainly, if you are a sponsoring organization, like a partner organization or a fiscal organization on somebody else's proposal that is a lead applicant that absolutely does not disqualify you um, from, from submitting an application on your own. That being said, um, depending on what your role is in one application, we would want to make sure that your organization had the capacity to successfully execute both programs. Um, so I don't necessarily see it being a problem. It certainly doesn't stop you from submitting an application at all. No. Okay. Well, that's our time for today. Um, thank you all for being here. Uh, again, we'll be posting this recording to our YouTube channel uh, if you want to revisit it and strongly encourage you to visit our website for full guidelines, application checklist, and to look at the um, application questions. Uh, we are so excited for your interest in creative collaborations at IU Cinema, for your amazing questions. 
and uh, the big ideas I hope we get to work on together in the future. Alicia, do you have any parting words? No, I just want to thank everybody for taking the time to be here today. We are really excited about um, this new version of Creative Collaborations, a program that has been around for uh, 10 years. And so this is a little bit of um, kind of, in some ways, brand new territory for us. And uh, we are really looking forward to working with you. And that being said, um, there's tons of info on the website, as Brittany, as Brittany mentioned, but please do not be shy about asking questions. Even if you think, you know, you have half an idea and you don't know if it's worth exploring, if you want to ask, Hey, is this half an idea worth exploring? We are very happy to have those conversations. Um, and so if you want to come to another info session and, you know, pull one of us aside before or after, if you want to send us both, you want to send an email, um, please do. Uh, we, we love this program because we really love being able to work with partners. And so uh, whether it turns into something or not, we want to help, you know, put you on, on the path to be as successful in this program as we possibly can. And whatever we can do to help facilitate that, we are more than willing to. So thanks everyone again for their time, for their interest, and for their questions. And have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye. Bye.